our thanks to the Williams for opening their garden gates to us. Uh, right now we're going to be joining Karen Bussolini, who's one of the authors of Elegant Silvers. This is a remarkable book describing a great group of plants that will really enliven your garden. Karen comes from Connecticut, and we're so pleased to have her joining us. And I've been looking forward to this interview for a long time. Well, I'm very pleased to be here. Now, uh, tell us why you got interested in this whole idea of silver foliage plants. Well, like many things, it started in my own garden mm -hmm. and also in a lot of gardens in Austin. Um, silver plants are just plain beautiful mm -hmm. and they look great with other plants. Mm -hmm. um, when you think about it, silver is not really a color at all. You know, it's not in the rainbow. Right. And I think that gives it a unique quality in that um, it's sort of a no color mm -hmm. and it's very subtle. So it can be uh, what we call a peacekeeper in the garden. Mm -hmm. It really harmonizes. But then when you put some really vibrant color with it, you make really jazzy contrast. Yeah, I, I think of it as a cooling thing. And in, in our Austin summers, I really appreciate that. Yeah, especially since uh, unlike in Connecticut, you can grow a lot of silvers under trees and they mm -hmm. really light up the shade. Right, now yeah. you say you, you hail from Connecticut. What's the Austin connection? I understand you've come here pretty often. Oh, I love Austin so much. Mm -hmm. um, for more than a dozen years, I've been coming down, mm -hmm. and uh, usually in April or May, well, we don't even have leaves till mid-May. Right. So I take a 6.30 <laughs> flight, and I'm, I'm here having lunch in a rose garden. Um, <laughs> as a garden photographer, I, it just seemed like paradise to me. There were so mm -hmm. many great gardens. Mm -hmm. And I was astonished by how many silver plants you have. Mm -hmm. So every time I'd come down and stay for a week or two, I'd ship my dirty laundry home by FedEx and fill my suitcase up with silver plants to give a try <laughs> in my garden. I understand you're a denizen of Barton Springs Nursery, and our, we have a lot of plants on the set today I that am. came from Barton Springs. Yeah, I've gotten in a lot of trouble at Barton Springs Nursery <laughs> because it's just such a terrific place and uh, lots of things I can't resist. True, true. Yeah. Now, uh, this, the plants are silver for, for a reason. It's an right. adaptation, right? Exactly. And, they, and there are different kinds of silver plants. There are different kinds and um, silver plants, the silveriness developed as an adaptation to harsh climates. Mm -hmm. When you think of uh, Oh, going up on the Continental Divide, you'll see lots of little tiny leaf silver plants hunkered right. down between the rocks right. or on the seashore or around here. Here's a good example. This is a Dusty Miller, uh, one of the many plants called Dusty Miller. It's a Senecio. And you can see that this is covered with very silvery hairs. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they make like a cocoon around the leaf. Right. And that allows moisture to be trapped. So this, when you think of the sun just baking down and the wind whipping this right. plant, um, that holds on to moisture. Mm -hmm. Also, every little hair makes a shadow. Right. Right? And the sun bounces off because they're light colored. Uh, this actually, believe it or not, is really a green plant underneath. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at this. If you saturate the... Uh, uh, and this new grow <laughs> growth is hard to see. Uh, but there if you, you go. saturate the hairs, you can see it's really... Yeah. Just green underneath. Now I'm going to turn this up so we can get a little yeah. bit. But there you go. Well, this is Dusty Miller. And again, this is a terrific plant. And this, I think, also shows another reason why. Uh, this is one of the hairy silvers. And there are waxy ones and, right. and variegated ones. But this right. this is a cool plant to talk about, too, because in addition to having this lovely uh, non-color, <laughs> Uh, it, it has this uh, great leaf pattern. Doesn't it? It's really kind of an architectural one. Mm -hmm. And I love the variety in, um, in the silver plants that you get really bold I'm textures. Gonna, let's bring this one over. This is a trailing germander. And you can see that just even in com combining silvers is really cool. Right. And we talk about a whole range mm -hmm. of silvers. We include the, the blue silvers mm -hmm. and the grayish silvers. So right off the bat, they're exciting to combine. You right. can get uh, a variation in the tone from mm -hmm. gray to really bright silver. Right. And then uh, this is more of a textural plant, and this is very architectural, especially when it gets big. Right, right. Um, I, I think people can get a real idea there of what the, kind of the, the pleasure of working with these exactly, plants. Exactly, but you can get even bolder. Mm -hmm. When we think of some of the waxy silvers, instead of having this down on their leaves, they have a waxy coating, mm -hmm. like the bloom on a plum. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing I think of for Texas gardens is agave. And well, and speaking of which, and we, we, we have, have this great agave. Right. This looks like uh, a agave americana. I think so. And uh, this is uh, there's this is a huge plant family for us here in in Texas. 
and, and th that waxy coating, again, an, an adaptation to protect the plants. Exactly, and probably the fuller sun you put it in, the more of that waxy coating it needs to protect itself. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite agaves is agave peria. It's uh, really, really blue, and it's got these you're hitting me really this vicious is my <laughs> black tips on the end. And yeah, my favorite garden plant, actually. Yeah. I learned, actually, it took me a while to get the hang of photographing in this area, because mm. I remember squatting down and getting Oops. an agave through my, <laughs> through my leg. But now I know all about fire ants and agave spines, so <laughs> yeah. I did pretty well. you, you got to be careful <laughs> photographing the agaves, that's for sure. Yeah. I've gotten myself more than a few times. But look at that bold texture, those mm. gigantic strappy mm -hmm. leaves, and then think about putting something delicate underneath, yeah. or yeah. something like um, Artemisia pawis castle, which has mm. a very lacy leaf. Right, now we're and gonna see that in just a minute. We have um, some of that here, but we right? have We have also uh, what we call Cenizo, or Texas sage, uh, right or here. Texas ranger, they call right, it too. Yeah. That's a great native Texas plant. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of cultivars. It's a shrub, it's a woody shrub. Right. And there's one called Silverado that's really, really silvery. Mm -hmm. And they're all different shapes and sizes. Yeah. Uh, There's one even that has a little really lime silver. green and silver in it, which Ooh, is really cool. That sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's a that really good one. That sounds delicious. So um, those textures go beautifully together, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think people, again, can see that comparison there with the Texas sage. And I think also with the Texas sage, you can see how the color of the bloom is magnified by the silver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It really helps that color pop oh, out. Oh, I love seeing that, that <coughs> vibrant pink offset by the silver. So mm -hmm. those plants that have that dynamic color combination in the same plant, mm -hmm. you know, there's a great combination right, right. in one plant. That, um, now, uh, you mentioned the Artemis, uh, uh, and we have that, that's a, a Powys Castle. This is Powys Castle. Artemisia, I mean. And mm -hmm. it's a pretty, uh, named after the goddess Artemis. Right, right. Um, it's a pretty adaptable one. Mm -hmm. It'll take a little bit heavier soil than a lot of Artemisias. Uh -huh. um, you can you cut it back when it's, sometimes it kind of starts sprawling and getting woody. Yeah. I learned this from Nancy Weber. She cuts it back by maybe to mm -hmm. this high, right. three times a year maybe. Right. And unlike in Connecticut, this stays evergreen or ever mm -hmm. silver through right. the winter. Well, you, Nan you referenced Nancy Weber, and she's a, one of the Austin's great gardeners. Oh, I love her gardens, and they're, I'm so inspired. I've included pictures of her garden mm -hmm. in the book, mm -hmm. and I love the way she thinks about it, that she tried to reproduce the patterns of nature of what had been growing where her yard was before mm -hmm. the city encroached. Right. And so she's got these gigantic um, agaves, mm -hmm and yucca rostrata, yeah. which I always think of looking like a Dr. Seuss kind of plant. Well, yeah, and a lot of these plants have that kind of quality to them, I think. Right, and then, um, so spread out widely the way they would be in nature, mm -hmm. because they don't want to compete too much with each other. Sure. They, they keep their distance, mm -hmm. but then she has little other things kind of snuggling up, like yeah. this great Tradescantia mm -hmm. silamontana from Mexico with right. a very velvety um, kind of texture underneath mm -hmm. it. You reference intermixing these plants, and you have another image from your book that is another Austin image from Big Red Sun, and it shows a different form of agave, but with that beautiful silver pony foot growing in right. underneath. Oh, I, I just fell in love with silver pony foot, and yeah. before it became a proven winner's selection, and mm -hmm. you know, we have it in garden centers now in Connecticut. I used really? to fill my suitcase with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I love that combination of the the downy, small, round leaf, kind of gently scampering mm -hmm. silver pony foot with the big, strong agaves. Right. And I also love it, there's an image on the cover of the book where it's combined with a blue fescue that's a very, very fine, waxy, mm -hmm. finished grass. Right. So that very linear, fine texture mm -hmm. is beautiful with the round leaves. And you can find silvers even in tree size plants and shrubs. Right. And we, one of the, the last plants we have here is a relatively new introduction for us in Central Texas. It's the dwarf olive, it's called Ollie. Right. Um, but uh, almost all of the olives have that really wonderful kind of dusty color. They do, I remember seeing them in Italy and just mm -hmm. swooning. Mm -hmm. But this is a good one. Um, you can grow it in a fair amount of shade mm -hmm. and it keeps us lowish rounded form and the deer don't eat it. Ah, which is a great advantage that you've discovered in your garden. Oh, I sure have. Uh, b being a photographer, uh, spending weeks away, I'm in Austin. Uh, when I'm home, I can sit up in bed in the morning and my garden's on a mountainside. I sit up and I look out into the garden. There'll mm -hmm. be eight or ten deer out there. Right. And I couldn't help but notice that when I came back from a two-week trip to Austin, 
the only thing left in my garden was silver. Ah. So <laughs> I thought, I want more of these. <laughs> <laughs> there's an advantage there that we can learn from. Exactly. Right. And so I'm trying to actually reverse the normal order of things. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make a garden that's mostly silver and green are the accents. Ah. And there the more go. silver cool. I put in, the better I like my garden. Mm -hmm. I'm contrasting that with a lot of golden yuccas. Oh, cool, cool. Well, uh, it's been a real pleasure visiting with you, uh, Karen, and I um, want to remind people again that the book is available from Timber Press. Timber what Press. A great place to be published. I know that you're really proud of that. And uh, that people can order it online or in bookstores. Right, and, and just independent bookstores sure. usually will order or just go to timberpress.com and punch in elegant silvers and there you go. Okay, well, Karen, it's been a real pleasure having you on Central Texas Gardener, uh, Elegant Gardener and Elegant <laughs> Book. Thank you so much for sharing Elegant Silvers with Thank us. Thank you, it's been great being back here in Austin.